Hello. Thank you, Polly. Thank you, Polly. Thank you, Polly. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Thank you, Polly, dangerously for a most entertaining show of Raw in a long time. You, sir, are a true prince among men, king of kings, Rex Regis. And any other accolades that I can't think of right now. Mainly because you brought back to the WWE at least Pyrotechnic. This guy Hobo Tom loves him some Pyrotechnics. And I'm wearing my Bullet Club shirt. I'll get to that later as well. Also, I just saw AWE. And if you like to see what AWE is going to be all about, some parts were really, some parts were freaking amazing. Some parts were good. Some parts were, eh. Um, again, if you want to hear my whole review on it, you can watch, I think, the previous video I put up Sunday. It took me, I think, no, it took six hours to do the post editing and processing. Took me, I think, two hours to put it together. So it's up there. I've put it actually on a couple different sources. So again, if you'd like to check that out, please feel free to. Um, it would help me get monetized. Won't have to be dependent on menial labor. Although I did work today, which is which was which felt good. Then I work again Friday, Saturday. So Friday, I don't think I'm going to be able to do a live stream for Impact. I might have to skip Impact this Friday, which is okay, because it's a go-home show to Simon Versi, which I will be doing a live stream r r, &R show for. And then Saturday to work, too, so that's not too bad. And what do I have for dinner? Oh, yeah, that's right. Thursday, I have to go get some... Maybe Wednesday, I'll get some dinner. For July 4th. Oh, because then on Thursday, July 4th. I just realized this. I have to make another video. I have to make my... Where's... Where did I put that card at? It is my 4th of July spectacular. And there we go. I knew it was here somewhere. Yes, I have my wrestling card all set up. Going to start off with Corporate Tom versus Vince McMahon. That can't be good for Corporate Tom. Um, then you're going to have a whole bunch of other matches. You're going to have an Enfuego match. La Generica. In a rematch, takes on Goody Goody Heather for the bestest girlfriend ever belt. What match is that? Oh, we have an Extreme Rules match. Twisted Pixie versus one Mandy Rose. Ooh, I should make two Sonya Deville. Maybe. That'd be so cool. That'd, that'd make me feel good. <laughs> I don't know. I think I'll just leave it as, as Mandy Rose for now. Making a character does take... Take a good couple hours at least. Then for the always underweight champion... Uh, the always underweight... Match, it's going to be the number one contender match for the always underweight champion. And I think it's going to include El Drunko, Taj, Taco Supremo Jr., Enzo Amore, and I forget else who's my always underweight division. Oh, Liam McKellar. Oh, wow. I have to do a lot of, he has to do a lot of wrestling. And someone else. I'll, I'll figure that out. 
eventually. And then we have, wow, for the Intercontinental Lucha Libre Tag Team Champions of the World, the Keller Boys versus the Cuba Connection. And then I don't know how I managed this, but Hobo Tom in a Stars and Stripes match is going to take on a Hulk Hogan. That's cool. And my card is subject to change. Make sure I have. But enough about that. That's that's going to be Thursday. And that's the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League Wrestling. You can see that here. The Hobo and Girlfriend Wrestling Show here on YouTube. But let's talk about Summer Raw. Oh, and just like I intro to Paulie Dangerously was for his first show as executive producer, I think. Something like that. I know he's an executive producer, I think, of Raw now. He's an executive of something for Raw. I think the only person above him will be Vince's top probably Triple H staff and then probably Paul, e Paul Heyman, Paul E. Dangerously. So he's fourth in line on, on Raw. That's pretty high up there. And then I guess, I wonder if he has control of Kevin Dunn or is he equal to Kevin Dunn? I don't know. It would be neat one day to know like the inner, the true inner workings I saw a snippet of it once when I went to Raw in Orlando when I sat literally behind the announced table. And that gave me a little more insight, meaning the fact that Renee's, Renee Young's came undone. And they got all kinds of energy drinks and a whole bunch of scripts. So thank you, Pauly Dangerously. Eventually, one day I have to find an old Pauly Dangerous promo. Oh, I should do that. Nah, I don't have enough time. One day I will, maybe. If, if, if Raw continues, if Raw continues to be amazing, I will eventually. Um, oh, who else do I want to thank? I know who else I want to thank, and this is late because I do not check my email that often. But Norwal Music, thank you very much. I think it's an email or a comment. You put on last week. So this air guitar, no, this six count goes out to you.
fighter is a sloppy fighter. So he goes for some air. Come on, leg hook. Have enough. And then Chris Lee, thank you very much for chatting with me in Discord. Um, I think you agreed with me on something. I forget what. But I know you said, sounds right, hobo. So therefore, you are getting this air guitar promo. And let's get into Raw. Raw starts off very simply with a match. As advertised, Braun Strowman versus Bobby Lashley. And this is a false count anywhere match. And this was amazing, except for the job that Cameraman did to show all the empty seats in the upper row. Cameraman 4, you're going to be looking for a new job somewhere. In fact, there's a whole bunch of retail stores here in Daytona Beach looking for a man just like you. Obviously not me. But uh, this was really good, though. Um, they just started off. They just started a brawl really in the crowd. They were, again, the steel chair shots. Those were amazing. Even though to the back, not the head. Cody. Um, that, that was really awesome, though. Uh, Lashley, Braun Strowman on the stage. Whoa, that sounded nasty because that is kind of metal. Granted, it is like the aluminum metal. It does give a little bit more than steel will, but still, that was awesome. And then Braun <laughs> tackled him, spear, tackle speared him through part of the Titan Tron where they have it at a girl position. <laughs> ah, pyro! Pyro, they brought back Pyro! Hey, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. That was amazing. The fact that they have in-house Pyro. Because there's no way. Or... Let me rephrase that. There should never be that many electronic sparks, electric sparks. That just has fire has it all over it. But if it's pyro though, and someone sounded like smaller pyro, it was so awesome. I think everyone that I know that was watching Raw was going, Yeah <laughs> What's this? We were thoroughly entertained with the first 10 minutes. And then it shows like both of them in the back both kind of look dead. But for the most of them, even though this was a dusty finish because nobody won, but there was no dirty foul play going on. So therefore, this is still a good match. In fact, this is so good. This is a cheeseburger match.
I really can't remember a time when Raw started off with a cheeseburger match. Or one that was just so exciting. The only drawback to that is that throughout the entire show, they showed what happened. And only for the first part of the Viking Raiders entrance was the Titantron offline. But I guess I can explain that and say, yeah, we just had to re redo some wires. So if, if, I can see, honestly, if an electrical person's there, it makes sense that it's kind of out for a while, then it eventually comes back on. I'm sure they can change wires out. That's the explanation. Oh, so well, how come the Titan Tron was out? Well, they had the, they're this backstage crew working frantically to get things working. Makes sense. I'm sure that the stadium have their own electrical crews too. If, if something really did go screwy, every so often did, but it was awesome though. I mean, the whole screen, the whole stage area was dark. They really sold the fact that yeah, they did something to the electronics. Um, so the Viking Raiders came out. I think they just had like a red spotlight on. They just had like the spotlight on them to guide them down the ramp. So that was awesome. But how? And then they went to commercial break. And then when they came back from commercial break, because uh, they had a lot, just a lot of recaps about what, what happened, and they showed Braun and Lashley going into the ambulance. Uh, the new day came out, and the Titan Tron's working again. Hey, all, honestly, they didn't say anything. All they had to say is like, uh, uh, all, all um, Michael Cole would have, say, would have to say is like, I'd like to really thank our crew for getting everything working again after what we just witnessed. That took 30 seconds to say that's all. That's, that could even be inferred a little bit, so that's not too bad. So there's a Viking Raiders versus New Day. Big E's just big and powerful. Um, again, those Viking Raiders, they're very agile people. This was a fun match. And, and then Xavier Woods, he did a new guitar, a new, I'm um, not guitar, a trombone, I don't know what you call it, the new trombone notes, I don't know what they're called, but, but it was, it was really good, it got the people of Dallas fired up, I think it was one of, like, a part of one of the college themes. Whichever college I think they were close to, so that was pretty cool. Um, the Viking Raiders, again, they're just great brutes. They do great tag team work. Really classic tag team work. That was really good. I'll give this match because this, this match got a DQ because Samoa Joe, that big fat, fat ass, like Scott Stein said he was. Scott Stein called him a fat ass one day. He came down and tried to beat up poor little Xavier Woods. And therefore, this mascot tossed out. And it was a dusty cheeseburger. Then, of course, uh, with Joe coming down, of course, Kofi Kingston had to come down. And then we had a proper six man tag. It was the Viking Raiders. And Samoa Joe versus the New Day. That was fun. Um, Joe and the Viking Raiders, they're just brutes. They're just thugs. They just wanted to beat up the New Day. And beat up the New Day they did. The Viking Raiders are so strong. Um, for all of Kofi Kingston's acrobatics, all of Xavier Woods' acrobatics, the strength and power of Biggie Biggie was really neutralized. This part of the match kind of spent himself that first part. Um, again, the New Day went flying, and they could, but the Viking Raiders can go flying too. Um, eventually, Kofi Kingston succumbs to the Coquina Clutch. There's a face thing. Instead of tapping out, they still have to, I still like the one, two, three. No, 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 no. Ding, 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 ding. Match over. But this, again, was another fun match, though. And for the first half hour, they had nothing really but wrestling and meaningful recaps. This was a good cheeseburger match. And then we got on some promos and made kind of the the next part kind of long, but it was still entertaining. 
Is Drake Maverick? Jasmine? Or his new wife who is dressed up like Jasmine from Aladdin. And that was funny. I swore I saw some bra padding sticking out of that Jasmine outfit. Uh, you're going to be going out at 24-7 now, buddy. Um, so he came out, R-Truth. And he had Drake Maverick, unfortunately, the ultimate choice. 24-7 title or wife? We'll see what happens. R-Truth came out. Um, <laughs> yes. But I like me some romantic stuff. I like mushy stuff. And then it was AJ in the club. And Carl Anderson mentioned the hot his hot Asian wife. A hot Asian wife, bet. So AJ's like, dude, I'm I'm married. I have kids. I can't deal with your hot Asian wife. So again, that's funny. And then uh it was supposed to be a match between No Way Jose and Cesaro. But for some reason it was no match because then the whole 24-7 loser locker room came out. And Cesaro was upstaged by the 24-7 people. Be mainly because R-Truth came out as part of the Congo line. Started to really tease and just torture Drake Maverick. How Drake Maverick said he wouldn't be going over the... He wouldn't be going after the 24-7. He wouldn't be there on his wife on his honeymoon. And I'll tell you what, Drake Maverick. You find yourself a very special lady. So if she allows you to go on a honeymoon to a wrestling show, you know what? It's all good. So with that, of course, he comes out teasing him. Of course, people in the loser lot locker room figure out who it was. There's a chase. Pour our truth around the arena. And Cesaro's just like, is what is this nonsense? And just decided to destroy No Way Jose, hitting a gotch neutralizer on the outside. It was no match, but I'll tell you, it was fun. It was a semi match. The fact that they're using, they're thinking that the 24 7 title is more important than a Cesaro match makes this segment a can of soup. Uh, then we have the Street Profits. They're just acting like the poor man's New Day. <laughs> poor. Oh, Charlie. They were doing the hip wiggle. Charlie has... She can do a hip wiggle herself, too. And then we have the Miz. Comes out, does a quick promo. Shane and Drew come out, they do a promo about The Undertaker and Roman Reigns. Um, then The Undertaker comes out. There's lightning. They brought back the pirate. Well, at least the uh, electric effects were for TV, which is really good. Uh, then him, the dead man shows up himself, says, I do what I want when I want, and I'm here to take souls. For you will not rest in peace. So, yeah, you just need to have him retire or something. And then again, so with the thought of having the Undertaker retire, it was Lacey Evans, and Baron Corbin was in Lacey Evans' dressing room. Wait a second. Something's something not right with that. And then, so it was the next match was Lacey Evans versus Natalia. Yeah, it was a super basic match. Lacey Evans really doesn't, I mean, minus doing some slingshot stuff. It was a really basic wrestling match. Oh. I hate the fact that she uses the Taz mission, the Katahajane, the, the half Nelson choke. And they used that, the. One of the most feared 
submission holds in all of professional wrestling. The move that was banned in judo, the kata hajine, the Taz mission. I hate the fact that they're using that as a rest hold. That was feared in ECW. Shame on you, WWE. You have the finger shaming. Finger shaming. Yes, finger shaming. Uh, uh, eventually, uh, Corbin distracts Natalia. I mean, he pulled her down. He pulled her down, so he put hands on her. That's rare. Maybe they're lightening up a little bit on the intergender stuff. Again, just grabbing someone's foot and, and taking their feet out from them. It's a wrestling technique and a wrestling match, so I can't really complain about it. I thought it was good. People be like, oh, oh, he can't do that. He can't do that. Oh, oh, no, that's all right. Oh, whatever. I mean, as long as he's not slapping her senseless like a Minoru Suzuki slapping Asuka senseless, I'm really fine with that. Um, but Lacey Evans does hit the woman's right on Natalia after Natalia gathers herself. It was a ham sandwich. I mean, I think even Natty and I could have a better match than that. I don't know. I want to know if Natalia wears underwear. Only because I know there's a very thin, thin strip of material. If not, it's like sheer from her armpits to her ankles. And it's like, huh? Ghost Commando, who knows? And there's a Ricochet interview with the club. Yeah, the club, they're just kind of being instigators. That was a slap fest between AJ, between New Japan AJ, and Ricochet so that instead of a handshake, so that was pretty fun. Elias then just gets interrupted by The Miz, and it's a Miz versus Elias 2 out of 3 match. This match was a little bit better because it didn't include Shane. And so it's a 2 out of 3 falls match, and I said, oh, well, we'll go to commercial break after the second fall. It's like, well, thank you for telling me when the bathroom break is. So, so uh, Miz jumps a lot to begins with, hits the skull crushing finale pretty quick. So very quickly, it's one nil. Miz. Again, very, very quickly next, Miz gets, gets him up. Referee says, okay, we're good to go. Um, Elias comes back really quickly, hits the drift away on Miz. Very quickly, and you're like, oh, man. Now we're going to commercial, but that's okay. I can go to the bathroom. So it's one, one. All tied up. Then we come back from commercial break, and it actually turns out to be a really decent wrestling match. Uh, Elias, again, he puts, like, the, the chin lock, and then almost into a captain hook. Uh, Elias, again, he has to be careful. Because Miz, he's doing the figure four on him, but he rolled the Miz up. Elias then ran and, and, and smashed his knee against the corner post. Never learned, does he? And then, I'll tell you what, the Miz put then, put then put the figure four on, and he tapped out. I was like, the figure four leg lock? It still works as a finisher? Yes! Someone's happy. Woo! Ric Flair, bitches, biatches, was happy. He was high styling, woo, profiling, woo, limo riding, woo, up all night, woo. Because the figure four is still being used effectively, and therefore, when the figure four is used, the wrestling move of my youth. This is another cheeseburger match. Then we have a Becky and Seth promo. And this is like a weird Forciano comedy segment here. 
He's like, yep, uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, oh, um, oh, uh, yeah, or, uh, or, uh, or, uh, or, uh. And it's like, okay, this is getting weird. It's almost like they're, instead of being naturally cute, like, like when Becky patted Seth on the butt after their, oh, what? Stomping grounds match. In the attaboy. They, this was this really felt forced. And I think Finn said, Paul, they have to be cute. Sir Paul Heyman has some control. Finn still has all control though. Um so they it was just way Way too much of, of forcing something that should be natural. Because you're forcing them to be. I know when I've had girlfriends, there's times to be cute, times not to be cute. And you kind of have to feel. And do what feels somewhat natural. This did not feel natural at all. So this was almost cringeworthy. Um, then, then Maria Canals came out. Wow. And it's like Mike and Maria, Mike shaved his head. I don't know if that's a good look. I'm like, who are you? And Marie Canals like grew her hair out. Her face looks a little bit different. But I remember her from like ten years ago, so that could just be me. And oh yeah, they said um Bobby Lashley is conscious and resting comfortably. Braun Strowman ruptured his spleen. How how do you rupture your spleen via electrocution? That's like the punch of the solar plexus. It's like, where exactly is the solar plexus? I think I know. That's it was funny because watching like old school wrestling matches, you kind of learn anatomy and physiology. Oh, that was a kick right to the solar plexus. Oh, the solar plexus must be around the abs. Oh, that's damaging the the, the knee ligament. Oh, the knee has ligament and something. I can hyperextend an elbow. I learned something when I watched wrestling. I learned about half my anatomy and physiology. The lumbar check. The neck break or the heart punch. The brain buster. Wait for it. So the next match we have was uh, Seth Rollins and Becky Lynch versus Mike and Maria Canales. It was okay. There was a lot of Becky chance. Poor Mike. He was just there to get beat up. Granted, he's he's on TV though. Paul Heyman said we are going to utilize these people. We are paying. We're paying them to do stuff. Get out there and do something, which I'm fine with. I mean, I'm I'm sure like if you're a really if you're a pro wrestler, you want to be. I know you want to be paid, but you want to be paid for what you're really supposed to be doing. If you're just there happy to collect a check, trust me, I understand that. And I have no qualms with wrestlers that want to say, you know what, you don't need me. I'm going to go to catering for a little bit. And then before the show wraps up, I'm going to be traffic. I got paid. And I have no problem with that. I would do that too. But if I had, but probably me, I'd have some corner of saying some kind of view. I'm like, you know, just put me in the freaking conga line. Or something. But again, they I give Mike and Maria Canals or Mike and Maria um, Bennett all the props in the world. Um, but poor Mike though. He was just getting, he got buckle bombed. He was just getting beat in. Seth Larry made Mike tag in Maria Canals just so Becky could get in. So the crowd was chanting Becky, Becky. 
And I guess Marie had a huge statement. Congratulations, Mike. Maria's pregnant. Although, so, so that left Mike in shock. So Becky Lynch was still in the ring, put the disarmor on, on poor Mike Knells. He tapped out. So Seth and Becky, uh, Seth Rollins and Becky Lynch win. A ham sandwich match. My cat cheese and I versus Seth and Becky could have put on the same match. Um, then poor Maria just runs down Mike Knauss. You're, you're supposed to be supporting me. You're, I can't believe that you actually followed my child again. <laughs> and she goes, I wish next time I want Becky to impregnate me. Oh, oh, that got the. <laughs> you can see people in like the front couple rows saying, everyone else was saying that everything, <laughs> you were like, yeah, we would do that too. Sick, sick people. But Paul Heyman, though. Paul Heyman's the best. And he's still there being... I like the fact that Paul Heyman can be the executive or executive producer or someone producer. Hey, Cheese Butt, welcome into the shot. It's okay. Come here. Uh, she's just looking at... She's like, oh, I, I, I've done this before. Um, but I like the fact that Paul Heyman can kind of separate himself as executive producer and Brock Lesnar's advocate. Tomorrow it'll be interesting to see if Eric Bischoff, who's going to be the executive producer for SmackDown, can do that, or he can separate himself, the producer, from SmackDown, the product. That will be interesting to see. That That's one reason why I'm looking forward to SmackDown tomorrow. And, yeah. Um, so then you have Paul Heyman's in the back of the Street Profits. Street Profits are like the poor man's New Day. And Private Party's like poor man's Street Party. So that makes Private Party a hobo's New Day. I like that. That's something different. Uh, then, let's see here. Or... And I wrote this down. This is just total conjecture. Are they going to push like a Wednesday night war? Because I know AEW in October is going to be on Wednesdays. So are they going to push a taped NXT versus a live AEW and see what happens? Then eventually say, you know what? We're going to have a live NXT versus a live AEW and see what happens. If they keep it on and the numbers are comparable, I mean, they might do something goofy like that. You never know. It goes through management's head sometimes. That'll be something. And then, and then, oh my, Alexa Bliss's bottom trunks are getting a little lower and lower all the time, folks. Then we had a moment of bliss, and Nikki Cross still looks like a little kid on those pig chairs. She looks like, like, like a four-year-old in like their grandfather's overstuffed wing chair or something. And the crowd was pretty upset. I don't know what the crowd was doing, but they were trying to what Nikki Cross. And then Carmella comes in. Carmella's bottoms were also getting a little tight in the front area, too. People mentioned that you could see stuff down there. And yeah, see that down there. Best way to put it. I, I live in Daytona Beach. There are women who by no means wear 
white bikini bottoms in Daytona Beach because there's nothing towards the imagination. So then our next match was Carmelo versus Alexa. And this was really short. This was like one roll up. Like if it took 30 seconds, I'd be impressed. Carmelo won on a roll up. This match was a piece of toast. And then we went to commercial break. We come back. Carmella versus Nikki Cross. This was better. Um, again, Carmella does the satellite, satellite head scissors, which is really cool. Uh, Nikki Cross, that spot when she sticks someone between the ring apron and the apron cover is kind of getting old. It was pretty good. Nikki Cross goes to the top. Um, she, she blocks a, a lot of kicks by Carmella. Carmella has some pretty good super kicks, though. Uh, she has some good extension on with those legs of hers. And Nikki Cross eventually hit the swing neck breaker. This is a ham sandwich match. And again, they were in the back. Uh, Nikki, the WWE wants you. It's like this face. Bailey, that's right. So I'll call her Bubble Butt Bailey. I think, I'm trying to remember who that I was looking up. There was no Firefly Funhouse episode. So I hope he's on paternity leave, I guess. Which would be it's cool. I, I can't blame him for that. But Corey Graves also got a haircut, too, because I was looking. I'm like, not Corey Graves. Corey Graves got a haircut. I was shocked. Then this led us to the main event of the evening. In this side, we have the phenomenal one, AJ Styles, as the challenger. And in this corner, we have the current reigning U.S. champion, Ricochet. One and only. And this was really fun. I mean, they put on amazing matches, though. I don't care what they say. Um, the only thing is, we saw this last week, too. But they still busted out some new moves, though. And this was really good. Um, I, I forget how... I think the... I think Ricochet... I think AJ... This is, was this when he pinned the Brain Buster? Oh, no. Well, Styles went over the top with a... A phenomenal forearm. He hit the um, torture rack bomb, and Ricochet moved close enough to the ropes. Ricochet has to pay better attention to his body position, because I know from on the TV you can see that his foot was under the ropes, and he was trying to kick his leg up so it hit the rope. It never got there, and the ref didn't see it. I know the refs are told it's like, listen. If they're out, just count three. But they don't know what they're doing. You have to, you have to shoot three then. But he, AJ first won, and he was all happy. He was new U.S. champion. Like, whoa! Are we on the Firefly Funhouse next? But nope, because then I realized it's like, oh, then the then the commentary said, oh, but his foot was underneath the rope. I always thought. And it does vary from federation to federation. Some some places, for the longest time, your foot had to your foot or hand had to be physically on the rope, just not underneath it. I think in New Japan, it's underneath. Pro wrestling gorilla doesn't care. AEW it either has to be on the rope or your legs are literally dangling outside the ring. I mean, it has to be really obvious in AEW. Chikara, they don't care about rope breaks. A lot of indie scenes 
rope breaks mean absolutely nothing unless their foot's really on it. So this was kind of a question. Um, AJ Styles had a brain buster. I mean, I have to give Paul Heyman props. Paul Heyman said, you know what? You're phenomenal, and you're the one and only. Figure something out. Make it look great. AJ Styles had a brain buster, which is a move we I have not seen on Raw in so long. Every so often, the cruiserweight bring it out for a pay-per-view, but not just on regular TV. Um, eventually, Ricochet did, I don't even know what it was. I don't know what he did, but it was some combo roll-up thing. It looked amazing. Uh, Ricochet picks up the one, two, three. AJ initially shakes his hand. The Bullet Club come up. Um, Carl Anderson, Luke Gallows come up. Say, this is not AJ Styles. We don't want you shaking hands. AJ Styles, cold cocks. Poor Ricochet. I almost thought that the club was going to hit the magic killer on Ricochet onto his belt. But no. AJ Styles hit his super styles clash from the I think the second rope doesn't matter. It's a super styles clash. That was amazing. And that was rough. That was a and that the whole match. I'll tell you what. Just because of what they were allowed to do, that is a surf and turf match. And I hope they continue this feud through SummerSlam. They can trade belts. I'm fine with that. Have them fight. Until WrestleMania. They, that would be amazing. Get the club involved. Bring back elements of New Japan. I think Ricochet. Why do I think Ricochet was part of Taguchi Japan? Ooh, I wonder if they would bring up Kushida to help Ricochet. I don't know my New Japan that well. That would be pretty cool, though. Or if Ricochet was one of those non-faction wrestlers. I always forget. But that was Raw. A really super fun Raw. Again. Holy dangerously. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. 